a boon, according to Eric Boland of Newsday, said that Sabathia threw today and quote unquote frankly looked very good. So he's a consideration for the ALCS. And Boone also said 12 or 13 pitchers for the next round be considered, and the opponent will factor into that decision. And I think the big decision that they'll have is whether or not to activate Aaron Hicks, who declared yesterday that he's good to go, he's ready, elbows fine. But you have to consider this. He has not played in two months. So you have to take a good long look whether or not you think he could be effective. Switch hitter, outstanding outfielder. I don't know if his arm is the same as it was. He says he's 100% back. Here's what I would do. If you think he's healthy and that he can throw, and if you think that his timing is there where he could be a threat at the plate, remember he has a good eye and can walk, I would put him on the roster. I would not start him. I'm sorry, I wouldn't. Brett Gardner is my center fielder for the remainder of the postseason. Giancarlo Stanton is my left field for the remainder of the postseason. We've seen the way Boone has handled with Stanton. You get three at-bats, you play six innings. If the Yankees have the lead, you're coming out. That's where Hicks could come into play. So then the decision is, well, how do you get Hicks on the roster? Well, your choices are replace Mabin with Hicks. I think that's a little dicey. Replace Luke Voigt with Hicks. That's more doable. Replace Tyler Wade with Hicks. Now, the only scary part about replacing Tyler Wade is you really don't have a backup second baseman, third baseman, and shortstop. And Tyler Wade can also play in the outfield. So I think Wade probably stays. Now, the CC situation complicates it even further. If you just add CC to the roster and you're going with 13 pitchers, then probably Voigt's out because one less bench player. Can you player. just take Lyon out? But if you go with 13 pitchers, I'm saying. If, you're at, if, if you don't stay, they, they were 12 in the first round. Well, but you would, you would go to from thir 12 to 13 because of seven games? Right. And also, you want Lions. Maybe, maybe CeCe can't pitch every day. Well, then if he can't pitch every day, I don't put him on the roster. But you could still get big outs every other day. Mm -hmm. I guess. But you're still putting yourself shorthanded in Absolutely. really important moments Absol in the game. Absolutely. That's what makes it such a fascinating the decision. Series. Uh, Clint Frazier's ready. Um, Mike Ford is ready. Uh, some of the pitchers down there are ready. Uh, Stephen Tarpley, Jordan Montgomery, they were all, all in Tampa. They watched the games. And, uh, you know, they're all eligible to be put on the roster. Remember, if you remove somebody from the roster now, you can put somebody else on. Each round, you can reset the roster. And although you can make points contrary to what I'm going to say, I truly believe that extending the Astros to five games only benefits the Yankees. And I know what Don's been saying. I hear him clearer that you probably were scared if you're the Astros to have while the uh, Cardinals have jumped out to a one nothing lead in the first inning. Um, you're, you're probably scared um, if you're the Astros to pitch Granky on the road. Right. Because if they had won in four games or in three games, then it was going to be Cole and Verlander. Even if they won yesterday, Verlander could still go on Sunday. It would still be normal rest, and Granky would start game three. So you have to pitch Cole today, which means that Granky's going to probably start the series. In Houston, where he's pitched better than he does at Yankee Stadium. I guess Stadium. you could still go with Verlander in game one, too. Right? But, look pitched, look, but look how he pitched on three days rest. He, he well, didn't have he, it. Yesterday was, was what? Was Tuesday. Yeah, but... So he, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, yeah. and Saturday would be... It'd be three days rest again. But you're still, you're still setting up to me. You see, this is my logic behind it. I got to pitch Granky. And the way it's set up, if, that, if, if it didn't go five games, is I would have had... Cole in game one, Verlander in game two, Granke in game three in New York. Houston has been unbelievable at home. Yeah. All right, historically, they've been terrific. So wouldn't it be better if I got to pitch Granke to pitch him in the place where I've got the best chance to win, and that's in Houston, rather in New York, where he does seem to have a history of not being comfortable in the big spot. All right. We don't know what the situation is going to be. You talk about a guy not comfortable being in a big spot. What if you're down two games to none, and now Granke's going to have to try to save the series? And he's not pitched well at Yankee Stadium. Yep. 
So if I got to pitch him, why not pitch him in the place where people are accusing them of stealing signs? Like, that's the kind of home field advantage that they have. And then I still set myself up for Cole and Verlander, or it would be actually Verlander and Cole, back-to-back -back for games two and three. And if you want to know how good they were at home, 61 and 20. Right. 61 and 20, that's the best in their team's history. Oh, they've been great on the road, too, but the thing is... is yeah, they won 106, Houston's a 107 thing. games, yeah. In 2017, Michael, the Yankees didn't win a game in Houston. The Yankees didn't win a game in New York. So if I had the chance, I would still go, go with Verlander and Cole, games one and two, if they had won last night, or Cole and Verlander. But is it that much of a disadvantage? i got to pitch Granky anyway. No, it's probably an advantage, but if you're the Yankees, would you rather face Granky or Cole? Because if you face Cole, there's a good chance you'll lose that game because he's unhittable at Minute Maid. All right, but, but it's still tough to, to beat them in Houston, right. regardless. But you can't now, pitch Joe Slobotnik in game one. You'd rather face Granky well, than like, Cole. Granky's not Joel Slobotnik, but he's still right. not as good as Cole or Verlander. Right, that's my point. But i got to pitch him. But now I've got Cole for game three in New York. But you also have Granky for game five in New York. Or game four. Guess it would be game four. Let's see. Yeah. It would be Saturday, Sunday, off Monday, day, off. Monday. It would be game Tuesday, four. Yeah. Unless they go with a fourth starter. Well, they might. He's got to start New York, though. They might have to do that. The only it? positive I see out of this for the Astros is that you could pitch Cole and Verlander in games two and three. And then you pitch them in games six and seven on full rest mm -hmm. at their full efficacy back yeah. in Houston. I, at best, I don't think it's that much of a disadvantage. Now, the other thing is having to play five games, facing elimination and all that. I think everybody is stretched to the limit when you get to October anyway, how many games these teams have played. But you look at the Yankees, you don't seem to be bothered by it. David Cohn doesn't seem to be bothered by it. But could it be checked into the in the con column if you wanted to be a glass half empty guy and say, the Yankees would literally play three games in 11 days? That has not happened. All season long, even the All-Star break, you got the four days off, you went right back to work again. Yep. To play three games in 11 days, that doesn't concern you at no, all? not a bit. Not a bit. I mean, I, I can see what you're saying because they're creatures of habit, but they played very well after, you know, four days off. Well, because they, they're used to that because you get four days off after the All-Star game. You do it game. once, though. But, but you never play three games in 11 days. No. So if the Yankees, for some reason, get shut down, you don't think that's going to come up? Well, maybe the Yankees were a little rusty. They've only played three games in 11 days. I think the Astros are still a great team. I think the biggest thing that you can expose about this Astro team, and the reason I think that they're beatable, is this bullpen. Because as good as Cole pitched on Saturday, they still had to get four outs. They gave up a home run, bases loaded in the ninth inning. They were hit away from erasing everything that Cole did. Which means that you can't say tomorrow is a sure thing. The Rays no. could beat them. I can guarantee. I can almost guarantee that Cole's not going to go nine. Right. All right. So they're going to have to get outs out of that bullpen. Now the question is: Is it Verlander getting those outs, or are they going to go to the bullpen? I don't think it's Verlander. All right, so they're going to go to that bullpen, which I think can be hit. Now, whether the Rays hit him or not, that's another story. But the Yankees, this lineup exposes any weakness. If they sense a weakness in a pitcher, they can expose it.